This place was known as the Andalera, the land of peace between peoples. In the old days, before white man came here, it was a meeting place. We now know that the Aboriginal people from South Australia, from the Northern Territory, Northern Queensland, came down to these particular meetings that were held here in Mount Annan. My mum and my grandma used to bring me down here when I was a child. They would tell me the legends about the plants. I realised that the legends are there to help you to remember why those plants are there. I'm Fran Bodkin. Um, I'm a Darawal woman and proud of it. I'm an educator, I'm a botanist and I'm an author. I was born on the corner of Crown and Favot Streets, Darlinghurst. Dad was rushing Mum to Crown Street Hospital, but we didn't make it. Um, I popped out there. People seem to think that because I was born under a tree, that's why I love plants so much. And I have to admit, I do love my trees. <laughs> this is the mugger ironbark. I've had it dated at 1600 years old. It was here when I was a little kid and I've loved her ever since because she's, she's sort of always been the same. But every time I come down, I learn something from her. The tree scars are very important because they indicate what the wood taken from the tree was used for. In the old days, the Aboriginal people, including my mum's mob, used to use the iron bark for shields, for fighting sticks, because they were dense and solid and made really good weapons. She's history. She's seen so many things or felt so many things. She's quite remarkable. I remember when I was a kid, I was get up and dance on a desk if I could to get outside because the teacher would always say, if you don't sit down, you will go outside. And that was exactly what I wanted. When she'd throw me out into the schoolyard where the trees were and I was with my friends. This is Melaleuca linaria folia, this beautiful old tree. It's one of the original ones that were here. And um, it is probably in our bushland, it is the most useful tree ever. And these are the layers of it. As you can see, there's so many very fine layers. And you just separate the layers and put them on wounds, particularly sort of big wounds. And you can see the powder in there. That's an antibiotic powder for wounds, open wounds and, and septic wounds and things like that. Um, it was also used, several layers thickness, was also used for baby's napkins. And the baby always had a nice clean bottom. Uh, for women's napkins, for bandages, anything that you needed to be clean for it. Whoa, come on baby. Where are you? Oh, beautiful little ladybirds. The native ladybirds. We want to go home, Mummy. Mummy, take me home. I'm working with the University of the present moment on native medicinal plants because most of our plants have a use of some kind. We haven't studied the relationship between plants and the medicines that they produce. And this is the thing that intrigues me because when my mum used to take me through the bush and my nan, they would say, that plant over there is fine. You can use that one, but don't use that one over there. And yet it was the same plant. And I often wondered about that and I wanted to know why. And they say, because it's growing with its friends. And that was all they would say. So I wanted to find out about the friendship. And that's what I've been doing all my life. This is the Eucalyptus mollicana. And when it rains, the tree produces a chemical, a saponin. 
so that when the water runs over the, the bark, it gathers up the saponin. Saponin is soap. And as it comes down, you'll see the froth forming over the, the bark, and it softens the water so that instead of laying on the surface of the soil, it sinks down into the soil and becomes part of the groundwater system. So this tree actually not only brings life to the other plants growing around it, it also provides water for areas that don't get water because the spare water that goes into the soil becomes part of the groundwater system that runs right through this whole country. This is the banya pine, and um, it used to grow here many, many years ago, or thousands of years ago. We even have fossils of it over the hill. And it was known as the festival pine because it produced fruit and so much of it um, during the, the festivals that we had. About every four years, they get a very heavy crop of nuts on it. There's one of them, but they're in a cone which weighs about 15 kilos. So you never go anywhere near these trees when they've got the fruit on. If you want to pick up a leaf and touch it, be very careful because it will cut you. Oh, by the way, the women were the only ones allowed to climb these trees. There is still so much to learn about our, our bushland and the relationships within the bushland. What I would really like is to have the Australian people to think about how these plants grow in association and how they produce far better than effects growing in monocultures. And every area has its own particular association. And if we could realise that, if we could use that, um, then I think we'll be a far healthier people.